He is a man who has his footprints on several different ventures in the sports casting world. It is the great Pete Medhurst. You hear him on the Team 980, 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern weekdays. You also hear him on the Nats Radio Network. You also hear him as the voice of Navy Athletics. You also hear him as the the voice of Rosecroft Raceway. So he's all over the place. He does so much more, and it's so much fun to have him on. I'm Brian Fenley, an anchor at Fox Sports Radio. Pete, I think this will be fun to highlight some of the the cool storylines from your career and this is a chance for you to brag about yourself a little bit and and you know have some fun with it so one of the things that I wanted to start with is we connected because of that attachment to Navy football I I used to cover in high school some of the the Navy football players before they got there guys like Cameron Kinsley and I think that's how I came across your work and, and then began to follow you a guy like Cameron Kinsley, who goes to Navy, I'm sure you've seen this before, Pete, where you have an athlete that just transcends the sport. Why does Cameron do that with what you've seen and how you've covered him and calling his games? I think, first of all, the biggest thing is Cameron Kinsley is one of the greatest individuals, I think, as a person. And I think those are some of the things that we often overlook with our student athletes. We see their greatness on the field. But I don't think we – I'm blessed to be able to get to know some of these kids uh, as the play-by-play guy for Navy. I get to know them as people. And during the offseason, kids like Cameron and Miles Fells came from a, uh, you know, not the greatest uh, community uh, in Arkansas. These are two kids that decided they were going to make a difference. And then others at the academy came on board and joined with them in a very difficult time in, in our culture in, um, and in America. And those are two kids that were trying to bring everybody together at a time where everybody was trying to splinter off and go in all these different directions. Football was really a, a, for lack of a better term, it was second, you know, second fiddle for these kids this past football season. Any game they got in was fantastic. Whether they played good enough or not, based on the circumstances that they were put in, uh, was certainly, uh, you know, anything they did positive, you know, you tip your cap to them. But what I will remember the most about Cameron is, is how he has inspired others to be a leader and to want to lead when times are difficult. And let's face it, there were some times uh, a year ago at this time where there were some very difficult things going on in our country uh, from a racial standpoint. And those without open minds, Cameron was just hoping that, hey, just open your mind a little bit. Just, just, just hear me out. Just, just listen to what we have to say. And doing it in such a calm and professional manner and really a mature manner. And we see a lot of issues. We see a lot of 18 to 23-year-olds have a lot of issues at college. And here's a kid that just seems to transcend, uh, you know, the, the lack of a better term. is just he, he seems to, to transcend what most kids his age are doing as student athletes, willing to do more as opposed to just doing what is necessary to get by each and every day. Cameron Kinley trying to raise those stakes uh, even higher. He even said that one day he wants to be president. And I have no doubt in my mind that as, as lofty as those dreams are, that if anybody can do it, a guy like Cameron can. So it, it's going to be so fascinating to see how his football career, I know he's looking at potentially trying to make it to the NFL. And then after that, he knows he wants to go into politics and change the world. And I think he's already doing that, as you obviously clearly see, Pete. What's the best compliment you've ever received about your work from one of your kids? I just think, you know, and I go back to those two, the fact that as I moderated panels that they were on with police officials and listening to them do their work and and ask those tough questions and get the right responses, not just a canned response, and to have them come back afterwards and uh, show their appreciation, you know, because you supported them. And uh, like I told Cameron, you, you run for president in 2040, pal, you send me a campaign sign. It's going in my yard, wherever I'm at, at that point, uh, I'm putting it in the yard because I, I look at it this way. We, we get a chance to see their athletic character, but the position that I'm in allows me to see their full character. And I think that's the one thing in our everyday lives, we can all do a better job of 
Let, let's talk to people about their character. Let's not assume what their character is just by looking at them and saying, oh, you know, but the way they dress, the way they talk, by, and immediately assuming the worst. And instead, open your mind, have a conversation. Five minutes with someone can change your outlook on people in a hurry, both good and bad. People that we assume, oh, that must be a great person. Talk to them for five minutes, they might be one of the most reprehensible human beings you've ever come across, you know? So give yourself five minutes, 10 minutes, open up, open up your mind, be willing to have conversation. That's the beauty of our format in sports. We get to talk to so many people. We get to interact on Twitter and all the various social medias with people. We get to really interact with so many different variables of cultures. And if you don't attack it with an open mind, I think you're the loser in that situation. Not necessarily as a person, you may not be a, a bad person, but you may not be expanding your horizons into areas that might even make yourself better and make your life better and help you make your immediate culture better on a daily basis. Pete Medhurst joining us. I'm Brian Fenley. I think listening and learning about your story is going to make everybody better as far as what it takes to, to make it in this business, but also what it takes to be a good human being. I've heard so many great things about you just from a humility standpoint and obviously the hard work that you've put in and the hours that you've logged just to make it. And you brought up character. What about your character? And, and what's the one trait that you've seen throughout the course of your life, even when you were young, that you noticed it was there, that you feel like was absolutely critical to the success that you've had in this business especially when the times were a little bit more challenging and you were really trying to break through. Eventually it happened, but it, it only happened because of this one trait that you know you have and you've held close to you. Uh, perseverance and work ethic. Um, you know, when people expect you to show up for work, show up for work. Uh, don't be that person that calls out all the time. You know, in our business, if you're a board op or a producer, a host, an update anchor, whatever your role is, if you call out, it's not easy sometimes to find a replacement. And I think that's the biggest thing. And I, I tell kids all the time right now, if you commit to taking a job, and, and yes, I know there's nothing glamorous, picking up the phone going saying, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? It may be your step into the door. And in many cases, I'm blessed to work for a company and a guy like Chris Kynard who loves to promote from within. And whether it's you know board operator to producer, producer to update anchor and eventual chance to host uh, some different yeah. things, you know, he likes to promote from within. And I always talk about just showing up for work. It, it, it seems like such a simple thing. Some people can't master it though, Brian. Uh, and, and if you call out, if you become a problem, it's just like what, how many, how many, how many times do you hear us in, 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 as we describe sports and a player, you can't help the club if you're in the tub. Well, <laughs> you, can't, you can't help your station if you're not there. If they, they, I mean, let's face it, as you know, these opportunities are few and far between. When you have a chance to be in somebody's building, show up for work when they ask you to. Don't make waves. Don't be a disruption. Be patient. Do what they ask you to do. Master that task. And then you can eventually have an opportunity to, to move on to something else. And, and I think that's the one thing uh, that I've always you know, kept with me. I, no one was going to outwork me. You might be more talented than I am. And there's plenty of people that are more talented uh, than I am. But the fact that I show up for work and I, I work as hard as I do uh, allows you to have some longevity, uh, especially in a market where I grew up in. So, you know, I'm not trying to relocate, uh, you know, to a, another market right now. I want to work here because this is where I grew up and this is where I've spent most of my life. So the fact that uh, I'm able to host in a top 10 market now and uh, do it with a company like Intercom, who is radio and they love radio and they want to expand uh, you know, the horizons here in radio. Um, that's a, that's a beautiful thing, but it, it really, it really comes down to something simple, Brian, just show up every day, do what they ask you to do. And you never know what kind of opportunity, um, may, may come your way as a result. One of the opportunities that has come your way and is so admirable and is a product of your hard work is being able to fill in as the play-by-play -play voice for the Washington nationals. I know you've been able to do that from time to time. And, Obviously, you've discussed how this is a childhood dream for you. And I, I'm curious, Pete, you, you fantasize about an opportunity like that, and then you actually do it. What is something that even when you present it in your mind beforehand, and then you do it, what is something that 
you didn't even catch, you didn't even notice that happened, or you didn't even think about that that happened that your fantasies of this could not even catch. Well, you know, you have a, you have a, uh, you have an idea of what you think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And then the first time you show up in the booth and, and let's face it, the nationals have, uh, are, I mean, I, I don't think there's much debate uh, when you start asking about the great radio crews and all of baseball, Charlie slows and Dave Jagler are right up there. And when you have to uh, fill in for one of them, you know, I went into it going, Oh my gosh, if I really suck uh, and social media is going to let me know about it. <laughs> and when you fill in for good people, there is an expectation that you at least maintain that level. And I, I never in a million years would have thought that Nationals fans would have been as good to me in those times uh, on social media. They have been unbelievable since then. Those 15 games that I called, the team went 12 and three uh, during that time. Uh, you know, I'm sitting at uh, a table with Davey Martinez and Mike Rizzo. Uh, Johnny DePuiglia, their great scout, of course, signed uh, Juan Soto. And, and I'm, I'm able to talk baseball with those people. And that's an opportunity that I never thought um, that would come about during this time. But, you know, when you travel with the team, and I, as I've told people, the best times there were the times where I wasn't saying anything. You know, I'm in the hallways with, with Charlie and Dave, and we're talking to, you know, broadcasters from the other side, and you're listening and you're learning. And I think that's the biggest thing is, is even – even at this point in my career where I've given, you know, so much uh, to this, I'm in my 34th year of doing radio. I started when I was 17 years old. The biggest thing, uh, you know, that I, I, I did that whole season was just shut up and listen <laughs> because they've been there. They don't need you to tell them, you know, how to do the job or how to evaluate baseball players and all that other stuff. You just sit there and you listen and you absorb it. So when you go to do the job yourself, you have a great understanding of what you're watching because the professional level is amazing to watch and to watch them and how they went about their business every day, going down on the field before the game to watch batting practice, being at the ballpark three hours before the game, watching Max Scherzer the day before start running pole to pole and watching the work that he puts in even before he gets to the mound to be able to see that and now translate that information to people that I'm talking to whether I'm broadcasting games, doing the talk show and, and things of that nature, it gives you a much better appreciation for what you're explaining to the audience. So you don't sound foolish because the biggest way to lose credibility, especially with the players is to sound foolish when you go on the air and you say something that you have no knowledge about. So when you're at the ballpark and you're around the players and you're around these conversations, you just, you, you just shut up, you listen, you absorb it like a sponge. And then you're able to better understand and communicate that uh, to your audience, whether it's your play-by-play audience who's listening, your talk show audience who's listening. And I think you also, at that point, gain a little bit more respect from the players when they talk to you because you presented their situation in the correct manner, in a professional manner, and they're more likely to talk to you uh, again at some point because players will shut you out um, if if you go out on the air. I I think the biggest thing is, is sometimes we have hosts and people in our business who try to make this personal and attack people personally, you know, they try to be coach killers and uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get that player cut from this team, you know, that quarterback, I'm going to get him mm-hmm. traded or whatever, but you know, maybe there's, there's a small percentage of people I think that find entertainment in that the other people, the other 90% of people that are listening still want your, your credibility, want you to be credible in what you're saying. Uh, and that's how you continue to bring good information uh, to the public because otherwise you become sort of a clown shoe uh, and just kind of throw stuff against the wall uh, more often than not. And at that point, you really don't have the respect of a, of a lot of people. There's maybe five or 10% of your audience that's sitting there chuckling going, yeah, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. We need to trade it. And, and and I I just, I don't want to be, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, exactly. And it just seems like that's a way that you could break and tarnish relationships. And as you know, this is such a relationship business and, When you talk about respect, and as, even on your end, respect for, for what you do, I think people, and I think a lot of people know, I know you've done interviews about this, but just putting, putting in the time, the amount of work early on, just to get yourself in front of the right people and how you would do stuff unpaid. You know, this is all stuff that you have to do. You, you, you work 
multiple opportunities in one day you don't sleep. I, first of all, I don't know how you, you function without the sleep, but I also know that how much this business means to you so that you'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. And that's kind of the mindset you have to have. But as far as when you were trying to get your start, and it was very clear, Pete, early on that you were going to make it because you would put in that extra work, that hard work you're talking about, which I think even gains more credibility and makes you more appeasing to the general sports fan, knowing how many hours you've logged, just toiling away, trying to make this happen. But a guy like Dave Johnson, how did he, when maybe he did more than he had to, or, or a guy that, that, we come across in the business that does more for us than we need to, or, or just has that kindness in his heart. How did he open your career up in a way that to this day, you're very grateful for? Well, I don't, there's no doubt about it. I'll never forget the first conversation we had as he and Joe Cohen used to do high school football on WNAV in Annapolis. And I got to know them. I played football. So I got to know them. I got to, do high school stringing at the Capitol newspaper covering high school games. And I would uh, follow them on some Friday nights and I'll never forget Dave kind of sheepishly said, kind of like, Hey, you know, I can only give you 20 hours a week, you know, like, <laughs> 20 hours a week. That's like 60 hours a week to a 17 year old kid. I mean, yeah. you, you, know, uh, you, you want to give me 20 hours a week? I'm there. So uh, doing some afternoon sports cast and then a Saturday morning high school show for a, a half hour, ironically, that same booth that I started out in at WNAV in 1987 is still there today. Wow. Side of that building, too, as a matter of fact. So, you know, Dave was very gracious in opening that door, supportive all the time. Anytime, you know, we, there are some people in our business, it's a small percentage, but it's not, but there is, there, there is some of this out there. There are some folks that are very territorial about mm -hmm. their gig and, you know, Dave, Dave could not be more forthcoming than any human being I've ever met uh, in, in my life. I, I watch what he's going through, um, you know, heroically battling an illness now, and I still see the same work ethic, uh, the voice of, uh, of the Wizards, the voice of D.C. United, the guy that gets up every morning still doing sportscasts, the sports director at, at WTOP Radio. And, you know, it, it's his work ethic through the years that inspired me because I saw the success he was having from it, and I'm thinking, okay, as long as I put that kind of effort in, there will be some reward at the end of the, the, the rainbow here, as long as I keep doing the right things and, and I keep doing things uh, the, the right way. And, you know, he, he's been an inspiration to many. Uh, you look at what he has established with the audiences of the Wizards and DC United. I mean, there, there's a very good case to make for Dave when you talk about the most important people with mm -hmm. DC Dave Johnson's probably in the top three of a their greatest players. Certainly, Bruce Arena as a manager, and and Dave and his his relationship and and the fans and being the voice of DC United and, and bringing that product uh, to the forefront, which unbelievably now celebrates. I believe it's twenty fifth year now uh, here in our area, and we've seen professional soccer leagues come and go. You know, we had a, a great team in a short time here with the Diplomats and the great Johan Cruyff and. Even that league folded uh, with all the star power it had. Uh, but to see how it has thrived in D.C., where D.C. now has a new stadium, Audi Field is a fantastic uh, facility. And whenever you talk about Dave Johnson and you talk about D.C. United, they're synonymous with each other because of his dedication from day one to that organization. And uh, he still attacks and promotes D.C. United with that same work ethic uh, today. And what he and Glenn Consor have built up with the radio party now on social media with Wizards Radio Broadcast. It's sensational to see. It's a, it's a it's really genius marketing of the franchise, and it's a way to get people to listen to your broadcasts uh, all the time. And 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 that's the the phenomenal thing. As we've gotten older, older folks that stick around for a long time, Brian, it's because we we evolve with the times. Some people haven't embraced social media, and in some ways, you know, you you tend to move out the door a, a little bit faster. Those who have evolved with those times, we tend to stick around a, a little bit longer and embrace it and, and see the positive in it. And, and Dave has been a guy that uh, throughout all these years, every everything that he's done, uh, even through that, uh, what I call, I mean, it's just a genius idea with the radio party. Uh, it's a great way to get people to be involved and want to interact. They want to come back the next time and listen to your radio broadcast. And there are some people, the fascinating thing about it is 
people actually who don't get there in time at the start of the game, but they're like, sorry, Dave, apologize. Just coming in halfway through the game because they feel, they feel that bond and that relationship with Dave and Glenn in terms of the radio broadcast, but you only are able to build that by embracing it, making something of it. And his work ethic has just been uh, phenomenal and a great, great example uh, of someone who puts out the effort and, and finds the, the just rewards that are there as a result of it. It's such powerful words when you speak about Dave. And I, I know two traits that you're not. You're not territorial, that's for sure. And you're yep. not stubborn. You're not <laughs> stubborn either. And you're humble. So I guess that's three. But the, the stubbornness goes to the fact that you're not that because you have to be adaptable, as you were saying, in this business, being able to to flow and change up your style and deal with different mediums of communication. And no wonder you're having the success you are having and you're doing it in a way that is just for so many is a model for for hard work and, and, and being a role model. I'm so grateful, Pete, for just a couple minutes of your time looking at your career, and I want to thank you so much. I'm Brian Fenley, an anchor at Fox Sports Radio. Pete Medhurst, so many different platforms to catch him with Navy, Team 980, Nats Radio Network over at the Raceway as well. Pete, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Brian, anytime. Glad to do it.